Did the Dallas Cowboys find a undrafted free agent gem on defense? All that and more in this episode of the Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your Locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Locked Network, your on. team every day. Locked On. Locked, Locked, Locked On. Cowboys. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Lena McCool. You can follow him on Twitter at McCoolBCB. Lane, and today we are talking about some uh, undrafted free agents, the Cowboys side on the defensive side of the ball. Got to say, pretty interesting class of guys that we're going to be talking about. Yeah, it's I mean, it's crazy how we, we kind of just started. And I mean, I'm looking at some of these guys and, you know, they're comparable in some in a lot of ways, in many, many ways to some of the mid round picks at the positions that they mm-hmm. that they play, you know, and and I think it's it's going to be interesting to see exactly we always talk about the kind of second draft class that the Cowboys get out of their undrafted free agent class. And it really seems to, to hold a bear here that they have a, a class of guys that, you know, easily it feels like could have been selected, uh, you know, earlier day three uh, and, and, and wouldn't people wouldn't have batted an eye. Yeah. So we're going to start with Tyra sweet, who a lot of people gave as their highest graded undrafted free agent. Uh, he was at the East West Shrine game. He played in the sec Actually had really good production at Mississippi yeah. State. Um, what did you see when you watched the tape? I mean, first of all, let's talk about the production. I mean, this is a guy who produced at a level that was similar to some of these other more draftable players like uh, Byron Young and Will McDonald. Oh, I mean, gosh, he averaged yeah. more sacks, more pressures per game than Will McDonald and the Byron Young. Um, I think the issue here, and this is going to be a theme, I think, with uh, with <laughs> with these these guys, at least it was for me, is being a good college football player and being a good NFL prospect and how those two things are different, right? Mm-hmm. I think that Wheat is a much better college football player than he is a, an NFL prospect, though I don't think he's a bad NFL prospect, let me be clear. But that's why I think the difference between – him and Will McDonald and him and, and Byron Young and some of these other guys that he, you know, produced at the same level at the in the SEC against similar competition. But the reason this guy goes undrafted is that he doesn't have that same sort of elite upside. And I think to me, when I watch Wheat, I, I he's a very valuable piece because I think in in not in the draft uh, stock sort of this way, but in the sense of. Having a guy who is a physical player at the bottom end of your roster, you can play multiple spots. I mean, he, I, I think he could play edge. He could play linebacker. He, he played with his hand uh, on two feet. He dropped into coverage. Mm-hmm. He played middle linebacker. He did a ton of different stuff and he has the athleticism to be a uh, uh, serviceable at the things that he does. But I don't know that he's like an elite player at any specific thing. Uh, and I think that he doesn't quite have the pass rush developmental traits that made him valuable enough to be drafted. So I think that he's going to come in here potentially and be a guy that could, you know, easily. I think he could make the roster. I think he could be uh, on special teams. I think he could be similar to what we talked about with. Lipke, right, where he's just kind of a, a guy that you bring to the game day roster because he can do a bunch of different stuff for you and not get you killed while doing it. But I don't know that this guy is ever going to be more than a rotational player who does who has some special team stuff. There isn't a ton of ceiling here, and, and he has physical ready-made NFL traits like strength and, and some explosion, a little bit of explosion and good arm length. But there's nowhere to go on his body at this point. And I think that's why it's there's pretty no maxed out. much upside. Yeah, he's very maxed out. I mean, you just don't see very many guys who are – I mean, that's the thing that the other two to bring it up. And, I, and I'll let you – I'm sorry, I've talked a lot. But this guy no, really fascinates me. Yeah, he's, You don't see a lot of 6'2", 260-pound guys. Like, he, you know, he reminds me of, like, a, an old Pittsburgh Steeler outside <laughs> linebacker. Right? Lamar like, Woodley, he, right? Yeah, exactly. Like, he yep. has that kind of body type. Which nowadays, you know, you play at defensive end. Uh, he has some uh, speed enough that you could play him at linebacker, and I think that's why the Cowboys are interested in, you know, maybe moving him there a little bit. 
but I, it's he's a lot of neither nor. You know, it's it's not like he's ever. I do, I don't feel like you could put him at any one position and like really like you know, push him in to like really develop, and you're going to get very much more than what you've already got. So, just want to say at the top, a lot of people liked him going into the pre-draft process. Dane Brugler had him as his 129th player in this yeah. class. We had a fourth round grade on him. So to get this guy in undrafted free agency is still a pretty nice haul because you mentioned yeah. the production. Yeah. It, it, three years in the SEC, he had 18 and a half sacks. Like that's it's a lot of production. Um the size in the athleticism is so weird to me. So yeah, you can see if you're watching this on YouTube, 602. Or, so basically 62. He weighed in. At his pro day at 268 pounds, yeah. uh, with an 80 inch wingspan and ran a 465 40 yard dash. Now, the, the explosion numbers are awful, and you can awful. see that on the screen. A 28 and a half inch vertical is terrible, and then just didn't do the, the agility stuff. It, it's weird. He's got a very weird body type, but you mentioned like some comps. If he, the high, high, high end comp for him to me is like Melvin Ingram coming out of South Carolina, who had that same body type, right? He looks like James. He looks like James Harris. Yeah, he looks well, like James Harris. Well, I, I, I was thinking that, that Melvin Ingram, when he was at South Carolina, he was like yeah. 6'1", 270, yeah. and they played him at linebacker, at defensive tackle, on the edge. And obviously, he's not going to be Melvin Ingram. But I think that's the role is you just have this unique body type yeah. with a lot of straight line speed. And I saw it at the Shrine game. I was watching the practices yesterday. There's some times where he does a bull rush, and he just gets mm-hmm. into the chest of an offensive tackle and buries them into the quarterback. So we'll he see. Can hold, he can hold the edge against offensive tackles in the run game like without a problem. Like That's yeah. the thing that you don't usually see with 260-pound defensive. Even six foot five, 260 foot, six, 260 pound linebackers, they don't hold the edge like this guy. He just gets low, and he's – punches people in the chest he's like brawler basically yes he is now i don't think because the cowboys have so much depth at defensive end i Mm. i would be shocked if he made the active roster but to me that's like the perfect guy to have on your practice squad like now that the practice squads are expanded where yeah sec three years you know he's got athleticism and you bring him in and he can give you 14 snaps on any given week and it's not you're not going to see a massive drop off. I think that's where his value is going to be in the NFL. You give him some practice. Squad. I think he makes a roster eventually, but I think, yeah, you, you give him some years, maybe a year or two on the practice squad, let him be, you know, learn to, to be a, a pro a little bit. Yeah. And I think, you know, he, someone like, I kept thinking of Kyle Wilbur, not, not, not that he's in mm. similar player or, or, or they, their game is similar, but in the similar sense, like, of how a guy can help you. We'll you need a linebacker. Yeah. He's yeah, he, he can play linebacker. You need a defensive end because you lost two in the game and you're down to so no one throw this guy in. He can he can rush the passer and he won't get you killed. He may even get you a pressure. But but yeah. like th- like that's kind of where where he is. Like that's the most he's going to be. He's so strong and tough and just physical that he's a valuable tool for an NFL team, but he's just not athletic and he's not athletic like melvin ingram he's not athletic and but and, and he's explosive not like James Harrison. But, so that's why he's he'll never be like that level of those correct of correct but he still ran a four six five 40 yeah. yard dash at 263 pounds and he has a one six motor. yeah huge with a one six ten yard split that, yeah, that's what's so, so interesting because i you don't see the explosion on tape but every once in a while you will see the speed and that's why yeah. he's such an interesting prospect for me yeah, and that's it's it's interesting because you know we, we talk about all these these testing scores and 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 we've always kind of talked about like what's you know what's explosion measured in is it in vertical is it in broad is it in the ten yard split and and it shows this shows you that there's all all kinds of different types of explosion yep. right and yep. he has it in the ten yard split he one thousand percent does not have it in the vertical no so it's no, it's you know and I think that that shows you kind of there's different types of, of body types that play differently you just have to find and I think that this guy is a useful football player but I think that so many scouting departments looked at this combination of skill sets and were just like I don't know what to do with this guy yeah, yeah. and there, there's probably not enough length and size to be like you know let's gamble on him. So he goes undrafted, but I won't be surprised if he has a six-year NFL career bouncing yeah. around on a couple different teams because he is a pretty decent player with you know some traits. So again, just somebody to keep an eye on. I, I actually want to talk 
more about the other edge rusher the Cowboys mm-hmm. signed, uh, who we'll get to next. This episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Are you looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and the calories? Then you need to try the absolute best tasting protein bar ever. It's Built Bar. You've got to try it. If you're like me and you're trying to be a little bit healthier as we get into summer, but you don't want to compromise on taste, then we've got just the thing for you. Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and they taste amazing. Seriously, they taste so good. You're not even going to know that they're healthy for you. What makes them so so good? Well, for starters, they're covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real dark chocolate. And they come in so many unbelievably great flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. Not sure how Built does it, but only 130 calories, only 4 grams of sugar, but a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now you don't even have to wait to get a box. You can still go to Built.com, make your orders over there, but now you can run into Walmart, go to the pharmacy section, pick up a four-bar box of cookies and cream, double chocolate, or coconut puff. And if you live close to a Sam's Club, you can run in, grab a 13-bar box with some of the hit flavors, including brownie batter puff and churro puff, and you can thank us later. Thank you for making Locked On Cowboys your first listen every day. Every day is tomorrow. We're going to answer your Twitter questions, so make sure that you send them into us. Uh, you can send them to me at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we'll try to get through as many as we can. All right, Layden, let's get to uh, the other edge rusher that the Cowboys drafted. It's Isaiah Land, who we talked about a little bit on this show on some of our day three sleepers. Uh, I think it was like a week before the draft. Yeah. Uh, small edge. You're coming at six, three and a half, 236 pounds, but he's got athleticism. He's got bend. He's got production. What did you see when you turn on the tape? I, I couldn't, I was really having a hard time with like the, the dissonance of, the idea that both this guy, Isaiah Land, and the previous guy, uh, Wheat, are both guys that w- play some defensive end and some linebacker because they are very, very different players, and they play them yeah. very, very differently, right? This is much more of your classic bendy, explosive guy that can be, you know, run underneath the table, undersized pass rusher type that you desperately would like to play at defensive end but you're not sure if he's ever going to be the size you need a defensive end to be. I, I think that this is a guy that, that that they're going to try to figure out how to play him as a linebacker on early downs and reduce him down as a pass rusher on late downs. Um, he has uh, uh, some get-off. He has some ability. He has some bend. You see him get around tackles. Um but you also could see him kind of, you know, uh, in pursuit a little bit, um, you know, running down people on the back ends. I could, you know, he, I could see him playing some will linebacker if they needed him to do that as well. Um, I, you know, I think it, it's interesting watching him play um, against kind of uh, higher end competition because it, it's it's so clear like how reliant Florida A and M was on him producing <laughs> like when they needed him to. Uh, and I, I can only mm-hmm. imagine what it was like. You know, it, it seems I think he missed like um, like half a season or something. He, he missed like a significant amount of games last last year with with an injury, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, and I can only imagine how much they you know would have missed him against teams like North Carolina and that sort of thing. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I just I, I look at him and I and I think that this is a guy that if he had gone to Florida instead of Florida A and M or or Notre Dame instead of Florida A and M, uh, you, you look at the skill set. And and, and, and and this is to me like a uh, and I'm not comparing him directly to this guy, but like a Harold Landry type, uh, sure, uh, I agree. Uh, you know, recruit, right? Where like uh, he's got some warts on him. He's undersized a little bit. I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to use him the first year that I have him. Maybe he has a redshirt year. Maybe he plays some linebacker. But he has traits and and traits that you can't really teach and and and, and body type uh, that that is worth developing. So mm-hmm. I, I think that this is a guy that you would draft. You know, the, I think the, the talk about him playing linebacker is mostly uh, an attempt to try to get him on the field so you can <laughs> have him hang around while you develop him as a pass rusher. But ultimately what you're trying to do is find a way to get this guy in your program, have him gain 7 to 10 pounds in your offseason program so you can at least get him up to 245 and then this guy could be a designated pass rusher or I, I know, agree like, with you. I don't I don't want him spending time at linebacker cuz it's just going to slow down his development. And that's one of the linebacker is just a position where 
It's instinctual, and it, I, I, I don't understand. You either have it or you don't. That right? Way. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like. It's it's one of those things where like you know unless you're playing a very kind of point and shoot linebacker like we talked about like there's a lot of instincts involved and and, and it's you're right it's it's muddying the waters where when in reality what you want to do with this guy is have him put his hand in the dirt and figure out a way to gain a little bit of weight so he can you know yes. have a, a, a hump or a, a counter move that uses some power not just speed uh, and then you have a, a ready made guy who can come in on third downs and, and give you some pressures but. Uh, try to push him at linebacker when he's not like exceptionally well uh, uh, versed in like changing directions no, or, 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 or killed, instinctual right? as a linebacker. Like no. it just, it, and especially coming from a smaller school too, it just seems no. It, it seems it, like a bad fit. No, if you, I was gonna say, if you want to play him making a three four, and he's gonna be your outside linebacker that That's drops different. into coverage. Yeah, but how many teams even do that anymore? Right, yeah. like not very many. I want this guy going forward. And yeah. you saw it again. I'm going to keep referencing these all star games, but he he had a sack in the game, the senior bowl game, that was as impressive as, as I've seen in an all star game in a long time. I mean, just bending around the corner, Very clean. getting a sack. Now, in the practices, he got a little bit of an unfair uh, matchup. He was going up against Darnell Wright on almost every one of his one on one reps, who Darnell Wright is legitimately 100 pounds heavier than him. It was the number ten overall pick in the class. Right? Well, uh, Darnell Wright faced the the uh, you know super cyan version of Isaiah Land during the season in Will Anderson. You and know, so he him, knows how right? he knows exactly how to handle yeah. this kind of pass rusher, right? I think of the two players, Tyra Sweet and Isaiah Land. Land is the one that I'm more excited about because I could see down the road how two years in an NFL weight room in a program how he could potentially be somebody who adds value to your defense. Where I think Wheat is like your replacement level, fourth defensive end that gives you a good floor. I think Land could be somebody that gives yeah. you a little bit of juice. Yeah, so Land's the swing, right? Land's, yes. the, land's the big swing. Like you, prob- you, you should probably resign to yourself to the idea that you're not going to get anything out of him the first year. No, this needs to be a red shirt year. 100%. It should just be a red shirt year. Yes. And, and trying to put him at linebacker, that's I, I feel like it, it it may be a bad idea. But I, I and I agree. I think for Wheat, Wheat is that guy that you if you was drafted in like the fifth round, you draft him as hey, this guy is gonna be part of our rotation immediately. He's probably not gonna be much more than a guy that kind of is eating up snaps. Uh, and land is the guy that's like, Hey, we're stashing, you know, we're, yes. we're putting him aside yes. for a little while. He could eventually be a, a, a difference maker, but he's not ready yet. And, and we need to get him to that point. Wheat is already developed as he's going to be like, go ahead and throw him out there and have him eating up snaps mm-hmm. land. Like let's, 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 let's season him a little bit before we put him out there. Maybe we'll have something that actually affects the game when we're done. hundred percent agree. This is the guy that I'm the most excited about of actually of all their undrafted free agents. I just think land Sorry. He's so he's so productive, and there's just something there. But you got to be patient, and I'm hoping he's somebody the Cowboys can find a way to stash for a year, and then we'll see. Because we've been talking about this all off season, Landon. Like their defensive end room is set right now, but it could look a whole lot different at this yes. time next year with Dorrance Armstrong being in the last year of his deal, uh, Dante Fowler in the last year of his deal, Demarcus Lawrence is going into the final year of his deal yep. next year. We'll see. Uh, let's talk now about a cornerback that the Cowboys signed who I think some people think might be better than Eric Scott, who they drafted in the sixth round. I don't know if Landon feels that way. But we'll talk about him next. All right, Landon, we're talking about our final undrafted free agent here on the defensive side of the ball. It's cornerback Miles Brooks, who several people gave a draftable grade on. I know Dane Brugler had him in the sixth, seventh round inside his top 200 players. Um, Cornerback from La Tech, what did you see on his tape? First of all, the idea that that's your favorite undrafted free agent and you just Hunter Lipke erasure is well, just uh, insulting, sir. Yeah, I uh, mean, he doesn't count. <laughs> I, I basically view him as a draft pick. As a draft pick in this one. Thank you. That makes me feel better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Miles Brooks. So, yeah, very interesting guy. Um, you, you, you watch the tape. Uh, lots of great defensive backs come out of La Tech. You know, a lot of uh, a trust in that program. Obviously, we've had some guys come through here that were developed by in that program. What you see is a guy who is a silo corner, right? An outside uh, outside corner for the most part. I don't think I saw very much, if any, uh, time of him, with him in the slot. Um, 
He's a taller prospect. I mean, he fits a lot of the size metrics that we talk about. He's 6008, so just on a shade under 6 at 1. Um, uh, two, just over 200 pounds. He does not have great length, though. He's no. under 31-inch arms. Um, and, and his athleticism is... I would say, I mean, just I think what this is saying, what the RAS, if you're watching us on YouTube, is saying is that the, he is an average NFL athlete, right? Yes. I think we can agree on that, right? Yes. I think my issue with him is that it's it goes back to what we talked about at the beginning of the episode, right? It's good college players versus good prospects. I think what I saw was a very good college player. I don't know that I saw a great prospect to develop because – I don't think that there's athleticism to go from here. I think no. he could come in. I, I think he could come in and, and, and maybe give you uh, some good snaps that would be surprising for an undrafted free agent rookie right away. And he could cover some guys, but let's talk about the Clemson game. Right. And, and, and I, it, 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 this is such a great uh, uh, example of, of beauty being in the eye of the beholder. Right. Like, you know, I, I think he looked absolutely terrible for some okay. Clemson. Um, and I think that the numbers bared that out, but they weren't nearly as bad as they should have because Clemson went away from him, not because he was stopping uh, Ingata, who's the, the receiver that was that really was doing the most damage, but because they realized that the other corner was way worse than he was, That's and correct. so they started they started picking on him, uh, and 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 there were just times where. I saw the 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 issues with Brooks in that game. You saw the the warts in a way that in the other games they just never showed up. Well, right? I, I will say, okay, so he gave up two touchdowns in this game. Let's go through the two touchdowns. Yeah. The one yeah. was just a perfect throw, unlike a I don't know, was it like a slot fade? I think, I think basically yeah. right out the pylon. Perfect throw. He got his hand in there. The receiver made the catch. I can live with that one, right? That, yeah. The second one, or actually, I think it was the first one, but. Uh, he kind of bit on a like a bubble screen, and the yeah. ball went over his head to a receiver on, on the outside, which he was clearly supposed to have. Um, I, but, I just those things happen. That's not the issue. He, he, yes, absolutely. Those weren't my problem. <laughs> the, the problem was that Clemson's quarterback, uh, who is Tua's brother, I think, right or, or cousin no, or something. He, well, he was a I think a relative. Uh, DJ oh, okay. Lele had a Tua guy Lova name, so I was assuming it was it was someone. Yeah. So uh, he couldn't hit a broadside of the no, barn. He, half well, that's game. why he's not there anymore, and, and that's why he's not there. But 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 the point is, is that there were like multiple reps where Brooks was burnt. And 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 the ball went too high, and the ball went over uh, the, the receiver's head. And Brooks is still celebrating, with, which is a corner, which is a corner, That's a very, typical very, corner, very corner thing to do. But my point is, is that like there was a lot more left on the field that uh, you know Brooks got. You know, and, and again, I think the issue for me is watching it. You saw the fear. You saw the fear that this Raz score gives me in the tape. Right, there were times when the ball was going down the field. And and it went over to his head and he couldn't get it. Like he sure. couldn't reach for it. He couldn't jump up over the guy. It was he was in sync. He was in he was uh you know in phase with the receiver, but it was it was almost like um <laughs> who's the guy who plays for the Bengals now, the, the former Cowboys cornerback, uh uh, uh Cam yeah, Cheetah Bay Awuzier, right? Like where where he couldn't he did everything right except at the end of the play. So here's yep. here's all of this is to say. I think he is kind of what he is right now. And I think that's a pretty good cornerback. But the problem is, is that, is he a great special teams player? Like, is like, how do I, can I make this guy any better? And how do I hold on to him while I'm trying to make him better? And, and I think that's why the conversation between him and Eric Scott are interesting because I think Eric Scott is a much better prospect he may not be a better cornerback right now. Well, that's yes. But I think he will be a better pro cornerback. Well, than it, it, and that was going to be my whole point was that outside of the Clemson game, which was bad, whatever, I, I thought Brooks's tape was really good. Like you oh, throw in the incredible. Missouri. Yeah, yeah you throw yeah. in the, the Missouri tape. He looks awesome in that game. Or you, any of the games at the end of the season, or you watch the Shrine practices like he's staying with say flowers and I, he, he just looks really good he is so much more defined and or sorry refined than eric scott is as a corner but eric scott's got the athleticism 
He's got more size. He's got the special teams experience. And I, I completely understand why the Cowboys drafted Scott over Brooks because those kind of traits are much harder to find than what Miles Brooks is, who's probably a rosterable cornerback. But the problem is, is you can't just be a rosterable cornerback. You've got to help on other, you know, other ways. You got to either be a returner or play on special teams. And I don't know if he has the athleticism to do that. And, and I'll throw in one more thing, and I don't normally account for this sort of thing, but I think it feeds into this, especially when you talk about a down roster guy who's going to need to take advantage of every single st- snap. There, If you read Dane's report about this kid, he has some focus problems. He has some want some want to issues, right? Or, or, or needs to be more mature about uh, being a professional is what it sounds like. Not that he's a bad kid at all, but needs to be more serious about the craft. Let's put it that way, right? I can't, I can't have that with, with where I need you to be right. Yeah. Like I need, I need a guy who is would, Boston is willing block, to die right? in the field, you know, yeah. like in order to make the team, because you're not good enough to not care about football at, at the, as the sixth cornerback on this team. You know what I'm sure. saying? Like sure. you won't make the roster. If, if you can't do special teams, you, you, it, it takes everything you can to be, uh, uh, a a barely rosterable uh, corner, then it, it, it's really problematic. If 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 effort is also going to be yeah. a, a problem on top of that, I, I you've got to be a football junkie. I, I just won't be surprised if we get to training camp in the preseason. In, anytime we see the drills, he's the <laughs> one that's playing better, yeah. right? He's getting the yeah. interceptions. He's the guy that's making the pass breakups on Ceedee Lamb right in team drills when you're going against the scout team or whatever, and people get really excited and maybe that is enough to get him on the roster because there is some developmental traits here at corner. Maybe he makes somebody else's team, but he is a good player. Like on defense, it's just, can he mature a little bit? Can he find a role on special teams? Those are both questions. We just don't know the answers to yet. Nope. I'm already going to go and call it. Uh, this is Chindari, to Darius Ward or Chivari's Ward, right? Yeah, where, I can see that. Like, yes, where the Cowboys just have too many players here, right? And and he's a good cover corner, but he doesn't give you anything else, and you can't roster that guy. Like he may be a good player, but it's hard to hold on to those guys if like you, you don't need a, like a fifth corner guy who can't exactly. play special teams or or do any of the down roster things or just needs a little bit more time. I have this terrible feeling. I like, see, that's what I, I 1000% agree with you. This guy's going to tear up training camp. He's, we're going to all be talking about him. And then when he gets cut, the first round of cuts, we're all, all everyone's going to be like, well, why did he get cut? He looked incredible during training camp. And we're going to point back to this podcast. I'm going to mark the date, May 8th. And I'm going to say, hey, this is the issue. He's going to yeah. look really good on this. But all the other things that you need your down roster cornerback to, uh, to be, he is going to leave them wanting, including probably in the classroom. Uh, yeah. You know, and and look, I don't want to give an attitude guy, but this guy is uh, is cocky in a way that may be off putting considering his Could actual be. skill level. You know, so uh, what, what although I think Dan Quinn might be able to control, he's had some cocky hey, listen, cornerbacks I, in his day. Absolutely, I, I, listen. I, I want to be careful because I don't want to make it sound like I think this guy's going to be a problem in the locker no, no, room. a good cocky, right? I think there's yeah. Yeah, but there is a if you're the number one or number two corner versus the fifth or sixth or seventh or eighth corner, there is there can be a little bit of a difference there. You gotta humble yourself yes. enough to improve to the level to be that good, and that's yes. where I have concerns. Is that I feel like this guy may think he's already good enough, and he, oh. you, dude, you are not good enough yet. By the way, I don't know if you saw this, but the NFL actually made it now where all the cuts are on one day. There's no yes. ninety to seventy five to fifty three. It's it's one day, which is just gonna be wild but we'll be here to cover it all so make sure you guys check out that show like labor day weekend it always happens that saturday or whatever so we'll be furiously uh, refreshing our our browsers as we try to memorize all the names just remember the cowboys are going to cut every special teamer like all their kicker and punters and long snappers like they did last year and everybody's going to freak out vested veterans also with handshake deals oh it's Uh, cut oh all of it's coming back guys our everyday years remember this cycle We, we know where we are uh man it's good times all right that is it for today's show we want to thank you uh for making lot done cowboys your first listen again every day or tomorrow we'll be answering your twitter questions make sure you send them in to us uh you can follow the show on youtube you can follow landon on twitter at mccoolbcb i'm at marcus underscore Mosier, and we'll see you guys next time